giving honor to God tonight. Who is the head of my life? I thank God for another opportunity to stand before his people and to speak the word of God. I don't take that for granted. I could have been anywhere. Could have been in any kind of condition. But I'm here tonight. So I tell God, thank you for that. When we look in the news, when we see people getting killed, all kinds of stuff going on. I could have been a part of that number. But God didn't allow it to be. So I tell him thank you. I tell him thank you. I'm always in remembrance of when and how I came to the Lord. The enemy was trying to take me out. But God stepped in and said, not so. And I'll forever be grateful for that. Hallelujah. 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 I come here tonight with the subject, a servant leader, a servant leader. That's a dual responsibility, being a servant first and being a leader second. Only God, only God can make a servant leader. God is the only one that can do that. Man cannot do that. Because man, first of all, we don't have servanthood in us without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but when we give ourselves to God, yes, sir. and we are filled with this Holy Spirit, and we become obedient to the Spirit that we've been filled with, then we're in the right place to become a servant leader. Yes. Many times when people talk about leadership, they want to go and grab the biggest office. And there's nothing wrong with that if you qualify for that. But one has to be made for that. God is the one that makes his leaders. His leaders. There are some that make themselves. There are some that are sent. There are some that just got up and went. But when it comes down to the kingdom of God, when it comes down to being in agreement with God, we must follow him. He is the lead. He is the source. So we must follow him. So when we look at servant, a servant leader, there are many places that we can go in the word of God. But tonight, I won't be before you long. Let's try First hmm, Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 6, beginning at verse number 20. In First Timothy chapter 6, and number 20. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and, and opp oppositions, 
a science, falsely so-called. Mm. Which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. He says, keep that which is committed to thy trust. When he says keep that, he's talking about the word of God. The word of God. We should never get to the place where we forget the word of God. Yes. There's nowhere that we can go on this earth that we will not need the word of God leading and guiding us. Yes, yes. It doesn't matter whether you're on your job. It doesn't matter whether you're on vacation. You can be having a good time. But remember, remember who you are and whose you are. Yes, sir. And in order to remember whose you are and who you are, you're going to need the written word of God. Amen. Many times, we go on vacations. We go to family reunions. We do all of that. But we will leave our Bibles at home. Or we will leave them in our cars on our dashboard somewhere. Yes. That's well and good if you have the word of God on the inside of you. Yes. And you are filled with the spirit of God who will pull up what is needed at the appropriate time. Yes. But many times there are some that seem to be so big that they forget the written word of God. They don't take it with them. They don't have it on the inside of them. They just going on doing what they want to do, how they want to do it, and when they want to do it. Yes. But the believer, the real believer, mm -hmm. he has his word on the inside, and he has his word somewhere near in case he needs to grab hold of it. It might be a time to share the word of God. Yes. You might be in a family reunion situation. And there may be someone that the spirit of God might lead you to talk to. Yes. Mm -hmm. And since they may not be saved, or they might be soon in the faith, you might need your word that you can show them line by line, scripture by scripture, That's right. what you're talking about yes. as you explain the word of God. As you explain. As you explain. So when we look at the word, word tonight, and I'm looking at being a servant leader. Yes. A servant leader. Before one can become a leader, he must be a servant first. Mm -hmm. He must be a servant first. Yes, sir. And when we talk about being a servant, we're really talking about being in right relationship with God the Father. Mm -hmm. A servant of God to God and with God. The vessel that God desires to use. The servant leader. The servant leader is one who has a dual role and responsibility. This person is in and under authority at the same time. Mm -hmm. In and under, in and under, in and under. That sounds difficult, 
but it's not difficult yeah. to be in and under the authority of God at the same time. Knowing who you are, knowing who you are and whose you are yes. will help you get there. Knowing who you are and whose you are. When we look into the word of God, talking about the servant leader, Every good leader comes from being a good follower. Yes, sir. If one does not understand the role of being a follower, mm -hmm. how can he be a good leader? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. In the world, in the world, mm -hmm. people want to be leaders. They want everybody to follow them, yeah. but then, if the truth be told, they learn how to follow, mm -hmm. whether they'll mention that or not. Mm -hmm. When we look out there in the world and we see people doing all kind of things, mm -hmm. let's just take the drug arena for one. Mm -hmm. Every drug leader was a follower before they became a leader. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They learned the game from somebody else. That's right. Mm -hmm. They started from afar, and then they got grafted in to that place and that position. And then they got so big, they felt that they needed to become a dealer themselves. Mm -hmm. They didn't just jump up and start being a demon. Mm -hmm. No. No. They watched at first. Mm -hmm. They had somebody that they knew that they took note to. And they saw easy money to them. All they saw was easy money. Yes. But they didn't see the trouble. The trouble. And the death sentence that will soon follow if they got in that game. It's easy to see the few dollars. It's easy to see the big cars. It's easy to see all the other things that makes drug dealing look so good. Yes. But the truth is not being told. You get out there and you start dealing. You get out there and you start shaking and breaking. And boy, you just don't know. You are right at death's doors. You're at death's door. Because you don't know who is subject to turn on you. You don't know. You just don't know. You just don't know where you might be that the enemy has already set up a place and a time to take you out. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to come to the Lord in the days of your youth. Come to the Lord in the days of the youth. Yeah. That you may escape some of the glitz and the glamour you think that's in the world. Yes. Because everything that that glitters is not gold. Yes. It's not gold. It needs to be tried. And the only thing, and the only thing that will come out as gold when it's tried by the is that one is that one that God has built up made given the position to 
of himself. Yeah. There are a lot of things that look good. But when it comes down to it, yes, sir. Yeah, it is good as it looks. Oh my. Or it might be death. Yes, sir. It might be death. Yes. Watch it takes might be death. That's a mouthful. When you look out there to what's going on in the world, yeah. and there's some streets that you can drive down. And there may be some nice looking ladies. They look nice, but it's death waiting to happen. And you think they tell you that they got death on the inside of them, but they won't tell you. You come with your little happy go lucky self. You got all of the rhymes. You got all of the everything. And you think that you are it. But you just don't know. You can partake if you want to. But death is waiting on you. But when we look at servant leadership, I'm not going to stay on that right there. A servant leader. It's one that has a dual responsibility. His responsibility is to serve and to lead at the same time. That's right. Yes, my Lord. Servant leaders are called and made by God. Yes. Called and made. My Lord. There are some that adhere to the calling of God, but they won't allow God to make them before they get their briefcase and go. Yes. My Lord. When God does something, when God does something, he doesn't have to do anything. Amen. Yes. Yes. Jesus didn't have that. Yes. Jesus died. Yes. God the Father didn't raise him halfway from the dead, but he raised him from the dead. So God does nothing half-hearted. Right. Yes. Everything that God does, he does for a reason and purpose. Yes, sir. And when he's finished with it, it's done. Yes. There is nothing else that needs to be done. When God is done, it's done. So when God begins to make us, 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 me too, me too, yes, sir. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not apart from that. No, me too. Me too. When God begins to make us, we first, first must be willing and obedient. And that is something that seems to be difficult for people in this day and time. Lord, yes, sir. Willing and obedient. Yes. Willing and obedient. There are many that are willing, but they lack obedience. Yes. Obedience. God's obedience is doing what God say do. When God say do it. And how God says do it. Yes. All of it. All of it. Not a portion, but all of it. When and how are very important right. in God. Yes. When and how. Yes. When and how. 
between it and out. It's important. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Because you can have the how and you move too soon and you'll never end up with victory. Mm -hmm. Being submissive to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being submissive to him. He will lead you into the when and the where and instruct you how. Mm -hmm. yeah. The when, the where, yeah. and the how. My Lord. Mm -hmm. Many people, many people, they get so happy, they get so happy, and they move off into the wind and don't really have an understanding where. So they never get to the how. But before we move out in God, we need to have good understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good understanding. My Lord. When God calls one, into a ministerial position. Yeah. I'll put it like that. We got to go when God say go. Yeah. How God say. We got to listen to all of us. Mm -hmm. We must be attentive to everything that God says. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because you can be so attentive to one thing and miss everything else. That's just or more important than the one thing that you grab hold of. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, my Lord. Many a times, people will grab hold to one thing and they'll get to run. Yes, sir. Because that's the thing that looks so good. Yeah. It sounds so good. Yes, sir. But if you don't get the full instruction, you'll never reach that that you're running out. Yeah. And that's a bad thing. To be running after something in God, in the church of God, which is in Christ, and have not been fully instructed. Yeah. So, when you get full instructions, yeah. you still need to wait. To be sent. Yes, mm -hmm. my Lord. There have been many. They got one piece. Yes. And they got in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And decided to go. Mm -hmm. They went without the instruction of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. God is a God of. Order. Yeah. Order. Yeah. Order. So when God begins to deal with one about anything, we must be sure, first of all, that it's God that we hear. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right, Lord. You need to qualify what you heard. Yeah. Qualify what you heard. And when you qualify what you heard, you need to stay in constant communication mm -hmm. so you can get the next. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So that you can get the next. My Lord. So you can run off with a piece and end up somewhere that you don't want to end up. Mm -hmm. Because you ran off with a piece. Mm -hmm. It's better to go with the whole. The whole and an understanding. God don't have to do anything. God doesn't have to do anything. When he set up, when he set up this great body, when he set it up, the apostles, he did that 
four weeks. Yes, sir. That there will be structure yeah. in his body. Yes, sir. His body. Yeah. The apostle. The prophet. The evangelist. The pastor. And the teacher. God does everything in order. In order. For order. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. In order. For order. Yeah, yeah. Glory. So when we look at when we look at our lives, yes, sir. We need to qualify what we hear. Yes. Because we can hear a lot of things. And we can hear a lot of things because of many reasons. So that's why we need to qualify when we hear, when we hear, when we hear, when we hear. We need to find out, is that God? Yeah. Or is that me? Yeah. <laughs> or is that something else? Why am I hearing what I just heard? Yes, sir. Did I hear what I just heard? Did I get a full report? There are some that will run off of that one thing, but they won't qualify what they heard or what they thought they heard. It's good to hear, but it's better to understand what you hear. And God is the one that can give definition to what you heard. They used to say one time there's some that some that are sent, yeah. and then there's some that just grabbed a briefcase and went. Yes. Okay. Some were sent. Some grabbed their briefcase and went. Mm -hmm. That can be very dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because those that would just grab their briefcase and go, they're usually disgusted yes. with how their present situation is going. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've become upset with something or Someone. Yes. But when you have good, solid foundation yes. on the inside, you won't just grab your briefcase and go. That's right. If you grab your briefcase and go, it'll be because God has called you to go. Yes. And you will have good understanding. Number one, that God called me. Number two, what did he call me for? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then when you define what he called you for, yes. now you need to find out where. Mm -hmm. Where am I supposed to be going my with this call that you have on my life? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. See, it's one thing to get a portion of the puzzle. But it's better to get the full picture. When you're putting a jigsaw puzzle together, you have a picture that may be on the box. And you're putting your, putting your pieces together. Mm -hmm. And that's how God does when he puts the lives of his people together. God knows the picture or the desired result. Yes. And he puts them together according to his own purpose and his own plan. Yeah, Lord. That's why it's, it's, it, it, it's dangerous to get ahead of God. Mm -hmm. To move out in and of yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. That's a dangerous place to be in. That's a place you can be in that you may never get back. Yeah. That you may never get back. Yes, sir. So obedience. Yes. Obedience. Obedience. And when you obey what God says, you need to make sure, first of all, that you heard everything and how to do what you heard. Yeah. There are some that hear and they just get to running. Yeah. They get to running with no definition. My, my. But God is not that kind of God. If God called you, if God called you, he is the one that you need to be in constant communication with concerning what you heard. Yes, yes. You will have to grow and mature to the place of hearing, of hearing and understanding what you heard. That's right. There are many voices out there. Yes. There are some foods that you can eat at a certain time of day or night, and you can have some weird thoughts. Yes. My Lord, watch yourself. Watch yourself, preacher. <laughs> and because we're all believers, yes, I'm not gonna go back in the day and start naming that some of that stuff that we can we can drink that we don't drink no more. I've been there. Some of that stuff will have you messed up for real, for real. But since we are believers. Since we are believers, we must be in tune with the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. The Spirit of God, mm -hmm. which saved us. Yes. See, you have some that are saved, but are not submissive. To the same spirit that saved them. Yes. My Lord. God desires full obedience and submissiveness from his people. Yes, Lord. Not a portion. Mm. Not when you want to. Mm. Not if you want to. God wants it. Is a requirement. It's a requirement. Mm -hmm. So when we look at becoming, 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 becoming a leader, yes. many times people feel that if you don't have a certain title, you're not a leader. Yes. That's not so. Yes. You don't have to have a particular title to be a leader. Yes. If you are born again and you are filled with the Holy Spirit of God and you're obedient to the leading of God by His Spirit, that makes you a leader. Yes. See, the world will qualify leadership by many different things. Yes, sir. My Lord. But if you are born again and you're filled with the Spirit of God and you are humble and you are humble then you are whether anyone calls you one or not. Yes. It's not about what mama say. It's not about what daddy say. It's not about what your homeboys say. It's about what God says. Yes. It's about what God says. He is the one that we all should be 
trying to please. He's the one that we all should be in. listening for and moving in. Yes. Listening for and moving in. Oh. It's amazing that many people will give more obedience to their boss than they will God. They want to come to church and they'll sing their song and do their little dance and their little shout and, you know, everything all right. But I tell you that. If you're giving your boss more obedience than you are God, something wrong. Something wrong. You do what they say because they're going to give you something every Friday or every other Friday. But what about the one that wakes you up every day? But you'll do more for the one that will give you something every Friday, every other Friday, than you will the one that wakes you up every day. That amazes me. Thank you, Lord. That amazes me. And we'll give more obedience to the boss on our job than obedient to the one that allowed us to wake up every day. Yes. That amazes me. My, my. You have people that say, I love God. Okay, praise the Lord. Qualify that. <laughs> Qualify that. How obedient are you to God? How obedient to him are you? Oh, I love the Lord. I didn't ask you how much you love him. <laughs> I asked you about your obedience to him. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. There's a difference. Yes. There is a difference. Oh. How obedient are you? Yes, sir. In the least of things. Yeah. Least of things. Hallelujah. See, it would be something to, you know, question about big things. But God starts us out with little things. Yes. And we grow to big things. He starts you out with the little things. The little things. You've been filled with the Spirit of God. And you wake up and God say, I want you to fast today. Mm-hmm. And you act <laughs> like you ain't heard nothing. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord. You go, you woke up after your mate and you smell that pork <laughs> frying <laughs> in the frying pan. Yes, sir. And you say, oh, that's better than that cookie. Oh, you can eat. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Boy, it won't be no McDonald's this morning. It won't be no hardest this morning. Boy, she is a cookie. But the Spirit of God, when he woke you up, told you. Yes. They're going to be a fast for you. My, my, my. So they're going to be a fast for you. Help, Lord. <laughs> but then you want to argue with God. You say, well, I ain't got time to be arguing with that girl today, God. Now, you she in that cooking out tonight. You know if I'm going to get some of them bricks and eggs. And, you know, the bacon, boy, she going to, it, it, it's going to be trouble, God. It's going to be trouble. So you would much rather, you would much rather be in a position of acceptance to your mate than obedient mm. to the Spirit of God. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to say how many times God let, might let you buy with that, but I can assure you, you won't continue to get by with that. Yes, sir. But anyway, 
talking about, let me get into my subject, servant leadership. Servant leadership. And when we look at leadership, when we look at leadership, yeah. you can be a servant and you can be a leader at the same time. Yeah. You have to qualify the place of servanthood. Yes. And you have to qualify the place or position of being a leader. Yes, sir. Jobs have it all the time. Yes. Whether we look at it and recognize it or not. Mm -hmm. Servant leadership. God has servant leadership in his church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Servant leadership. Servant leadership. I wrote something down here. One who has a dual role and responsibility. Yes. Talking about the servant leader. Yes, sir. Dual role. Yeah. Dual role. At many times, people have a problem with dual roles and responsibility. They will grab hold to that that looks good, sounds good, and feels good. Yes. And they'll do away with the other. Yes. They'll ignore the other. My Lord. But it all works hand in hand. Yes. Dual role and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Dual role and responsibility. Some people begin to understand when they're on certain positions in their local job. Yeah. But if they're not in that position, they never even look into it to see what is that all about. That's right. All they do is look at their supervisor and they say, boy, he or she this, he or she that, he or she this. But you don't even understand. Unless you've learned how to be a servant leader yes. in the local church, yes. you can't even begin to understand what the supervisor on the natural job goes through dealing with some of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord. You know how you come to work sometimes? You don't feel like being bothered? <laughs> yes, man, I am. I, I ain't with it today. Same with it today. You ain't with what? Well, go home. Oh, I got to. Mm, no, no, no. No, I got to come to work. Oh, you got to come to work. You got to get a paycheck. But you got a problem with the week. Mm -hmm. You got a problem. You should stay home. Come on, man. Well, oh, they going to write me up. I can't get the right up. I got two. <laughs> Can't afford to get another car. Well, they, they be talking about sending me out the door. Oh. You do all of that for the natural job. Yeah. To keep it. My, my. But what will you do to make sure that you remain in God? Yes. Many people will do a lot for the natural job. And they won't consider doing what needs to be done in God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That has always amazed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is the one that has the last say so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your boss has some say so, but God has the last say so. Mm -hmm. And his say so is what all of us need to be concerned with. So when we deal with being a servant leader, a servant leader, a servant leader, a servant leader is one that is in and under authority at the same time. A servant leader is one who is in and under, in and under, in and under, in and under at the same time. That can be difficult, but with the Spirit of God, it don't have to be. Mm -hmm. 
Let me get this scripture and get out of the way. Somebody keeps trying to shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's um, let's look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, please. I'm going to try to get on that y'all way. I'm going to try to be obedient. Huh? We got somebody trying to help me preach. <laughs> That's not helping. Okay. Well, okay, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be obedient. Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. Verse 13 and verse number 14. Verse 13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Jesus Christ. That good thing which was committed unto thee Keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold on to sound words. Sound words. Sound words. There are words that sound good, but they mean nothing when it don't line up with what God says in his word. Yes. So we're not talking about holding on to stuff that just sounds good. Mm -hmm. Stuff that just makes you jump and shout and all of that. But let's find out what that says in comparison with what God says. Yes. And when you look at that compared to what God says, you have a decision to make. Yeah. Whether you're going to hear that or whether you're just going to let that go right out your ear. Yeah. But tonight, we want to be in obedience to God. Yeah. Being obedient to God. So, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 20. I thought I heard somebody that wanted to help me preach. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. What has been committed to you? I don't need an answer. In your own mind. Find out what has been committed to you. <laughs> oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoiding, 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 avoiding. It's amazing that they put avoiding there. So that lets me know there are some things that we need to avoid. We just can't do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it, where we want to do it. There are some things that we must avoid. Mm -hmm. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding, avoiding profane and vain babbling and oppositions of science falsely so-called. 
which some have erred concerning the faith. There are some things that we need to avoid in our everyday life, on our jobs, and even in our homes. There are some things that go on in our homes that should not even be named among us. Yeah. But we feel that because it's not in the house of God, it's not important. But it is important. Many times, we cause the judgment of God to fall on us because we are not who we say we are at home. Mm -hmm. You'll come in the house of God and do everything right. Mm -hmm. But at home, you do what you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. Yeah. That ain't right. Mm -hmm. That's not right. And when you have children, they take note of that. They see mom and daddy acting Acting out, acting out, acting out, acting out, acting out. But then when 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 your son and your daughter do that, then you want to beat them. You want to punish them when they do that, but they've seen you act out, and now you don't know where to get that from. They've been they've been watching you. They've been watching you lie. The phone rang. They answer the phone. And it's a bill collector. And you look at the caller ID. Oh, tell them I ain't home. <laughs> you want to beat little Johnny Jr. by lying. But you looked at the caller ID and saw it was a bill collector. And you just told him to lie. Wait a minute. That ain't right. That's not right. But there are a lot of people that do that. Hopefully that, that's none of us in here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell my ain't home? She says she ain't home. <laughs> then you want to be. Yeah. Then you want to be. You did say you tell them you weren't home. But you want to be. Because they didn't do it like you wanted them to do it. That's wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. That's wrong. We put the idea of lying in our children sometimes. Because we want to avoid talking to the people that we need to talk to. What you running from them for? If you don't have the money, you ain't got the money. Have an honest conversation with them. Listen. I don't have it right now, but if you give me opportunity to, I'll send you X and so on X and so date, and be sure you do what you said you was going to do. That's the end of that. That's the end of that. You hide in your car. You know you ain't paid them people. You know you ain't paid. My Lord. But you hide in your car in your neighbor yard around the corner. So so when the people pass by, they ain't gonna see my car. When you go to work, you don't even park where you would normally park. You park somewhere else. They stay right by the job, they ain't gonna get my car. It's your car when you pay for it. Yeah. But it's but it's your car. You know your older people. What you running for? Call them up and talk to them. They tried to talk to you, but you won't talk to them. My Lord. But you won't talk to them and try to make some arrangements. No, we won't do that. We'll avoid picking up the phone. We will avoid talking to them. It's amazing. You don't do that for those same people that hold your mortgage. You'll talk to them. Why? Because I need to be away the place to stay. Okay. All right. Like you don't need your car. Like you don't need your transportation. Mm. But you talk to them. You'll lie to them. You'll do all you can to come up with a payment 
on whatever date is due on you, but you won't talk to the cop. That just amazes me. You talk to one, but you won't talk to the other. And the next thing you want to holler about how much you love the law. Mm. Amazing. To me. I don't know what it sounds like to y'all, but it sounds like very spooky over here. But anyway, we be here for you out here. Old Timothy, verse number 20. Old Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoiding, avoiding. Profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have air concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. So when we say that we are one thing, we need to be that. Regardless of whether we are home, whether we're in the church, or we're on our job. People are watching us. People are watching us. They hear what we say, whether they challenge us, challenge us on it or not. But at the proper time, they will remember it and they will bring it back to your attention. So let's be who we say we are. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a blessed praise God for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glad to read this tonight, sir. Amen. Here's a quick word. Amen. 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 The Lord is good. Amen. And uh, we give God praise. Amen. And glory and honor for Him. Amen. The gift that He is. Amen. And, uh, you know, nothing takes the place of experience. And um, when you have you know, been in God, the things of the Lord. Uh, it's a great blessing, a great honor. So we should never underestimate what's on the inside of leaders, servants, of God. And uh, we can glean and be really blessed. Amen. A lot, a lot, of cons lot to consider um, in what we shared tonight. Amen. Amen. So um, we, we're going to let you share again next week. But we're going to give you a part two. We're not streaming.